Game of Thrones has quickly become a cultural phenomenon and has garnered a reputation for defying expectations as well as breaking conventions. It's a show built upon political intrigue, familial bonds, and deeply imagined characters in a deeply imagined world. The first four seasons were dutifully faithful to the source material, only making minor changes such as character ages, typically making the younger characters a bit older to make casting easier. Up until Season 5, the biggest complaint from fans as far as I can tell is the exclusion of the character Lady Stoneheart, who we still may see in the seasons to come. But now that the show has caught up with George, I've seen complaints that it's betraying its roots. By giving us more traditional or even cliched moments in place of the jaw-dropping scenes the show is most famous for, as much as we all loved the Hound, did they really need to bring him back? Is this going to start becoming one of those predictable stories with no real consequences for our heroes? Look at the Battle of the Bastards. It largely satisfied audiences, but there are many complaining that it falls into the same cliches the show used to be known for destroying. Our hero charges into battle and leaves miraculously unscathed when Deus Ex Littlefinger comes in to save the day. And it's not just Jon, Davos, Sansa, Tormund, and Lyanna all survived the battle as well. Something you'd expect from Tolkien or Rowling, but not our boy George, right? It must be David and Dan screwing everything up, because George would never do something like that. Or would he? Let's take a look at some of the visual parallels we get this season, mirrors of earlier episodes in the show. The remaining perpetrators of the Red Wedding get a taste of their own medicine. Or take a look at the shot of Jon in the Battle of the Bastards and its reminiscence of Daenerys in the episode Misa, a pairing of some significance now that we know Jon is indeed a Targaryen, a long-held but unproven fan theory now confirmed by HBO. But my favorite has to be the King in the North scene, which plays almost identically to Season 1's finale with Rob being named King. And much like the end of that episode, we think everything's going to end well. Rob will win the war and get revenge for his father, and it takes two full seasons for that gut punch to be delivered. We were just in the calm before the storm then, and I think that's where we find ourselves again. Have we already forgotten about triumphant moments like Blackwater, or this scene in Season 3 where Daenerys buys the Unsullied? Sure, you could argue that it's not quite the same, but George most definitely has given us story developments in the past that are on the cliché and hopeful side, but it's that build-up that makes it that much more powerful when he smashes it all apart. One of the show's greatest strengths has been the ability to fool us, to pull the wool over our eyes and distract us, lead us to believe our heroes are safe, and then drop a bomb on us. And I think it's important to remember that David and Dan aren't getting completely left in the dark on Martin's plans for the future. I think people are just nervous to see anyone else take the reins on his magnum opus. And it's understandable, but when dealing with something so massively successful, and with child actors who aren't getting any younger, and an audience that clearly has pretty thin patience, sacrifices must be made. They can't just put the show on hold for a few years for George to catch up. Let's compare it to another popular fantasy series. Series. Harry Potter. The movie started being made before she was finished with her series, but she kept a consistent pace alongside the films, never lagging behind. Now let's compare that to Game of Thrones. Quite a bit different, with the books taking longer to be released, and then eventually... All jokes aside, it's a pretty tall order they're faced with, finishing the series in this way. Once upon a time, it was planned in a way that George could catch up, but with the show moving so quickly and George writing so slowly, it just didn't end up happening that way. But to those worried for the show's future, I think there's a line that we should all remember. When dead men, and worse, come hunting for us in the night, do you think it matters who sits on the Iron Throne? The very first scene in the show and the books gives us our first glimpse of the White Walkers, and we slowly learn more about them as the series progresses. We've been promised all along that winter is coming, and with it, the White Walkers and the Army of the Dead. All of this squabbling over house, throne, and birthright has served as the focal point in a web of a much larger story building since the very beginning. Most of the characters have had their eye on the wrong prize the whole time, and it's gotten a lot of them killed. The only people who seem to understand the coming threat are the Wildlings, some of the Night's Watch, and followers of the Lord of Light. Ask yourself, What's more compelling for when the threat arrives? What tension would there be to see the army of the dead storm Winterfell if Ramsay had won the battle? 
Would anyone really care what that outcome would be? There's nothing at stake without beloved characters to root for, which means sometimes the bad guy is going to lose. This is the true balancing act the show has been pulling off these last six seasons, giving us just enough to believe in while taking just enough away for us to be worried for the fate of these characters, while keeping it all in line in a way that is consistently interesting, constantly building towards the great climax to come, and this season is no different. With so much going so well for so many characters, there's just that much more to lose. Take a look back at season three and the Red Wedding. Those of us who hadn't read the books were so sure Rob was going to succeed, there wasn't a doubt in our mind. Sure, there was still tension, but we were never really worried. None of us learned our lesson from episode nine of the first season. Without having our heroes succeed from time to time, there's nothing to lose, and I'd argue that we'd all get sick of the show pretty quickly if all it ever did was kill off its most likable characters. There has to be some respite every now and again, or it becomes just as predictable as anything else. Try to imagine that war anyways against the White Walkers. Walder Frey in one corner, Ramsay Bolton in another, Cersei Lannister off to the side waiting for the mountain to save her. There wouldn't even be a fight, they would just get slaughtered, which would be satisfying in its own right, but that's not why we watch this show. We watch it for the characters we love. The story's not over yet. We still have another 13 or so episodes to look forward to, which may not seem like a lot, but if they run close to 60 minutes per episode, it'll be longer than the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is pretty damn long. And this means we'll get to see the payoff of some things they've been building since the very beginning, like Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven. What are the other implications of the time travel besides what happened with Hodor? Did he have something to do with Eris going mad? Is he Bran the Builder? Who will sit on the Iron Throne when all is said and done? Does it even matter? Was it a vision of the future that Danny saw in the House of the Undying? Who will survive the Great War to come, if anyone? Season 6 is just the calm before the storm. The stark words always come true eventually. And now that winter has finally come, the greatest threat the Seven Kingdoms have ever seen comes with it. And I for one am grateful we still have so many strong characters left to fight. I expect we'll say goodbye to many of them before it's all said and done, but I couldn't be more excited for the next season, and I think anyone who's been a longtime fan of the show should be too. George has given plenty of details of the fates of certain characters in the general outline of the ending, so can we expect David and Dan to finish the story with the same flourish that George would? Probably not, but they haven't really let us down yet, and I don't expect they will now. They had a lot to prove last season, and with so much triumph and comparably little tragedy, I think they have us right where they want us. All along the series' run, what has drawn people in most has been its ability to shock us, and by the looks of it, we've got some pretty big moments still to come. All of the people who think this season played it too safe are in for a rude awakening. So many fans believe all of these beloved characters are safe, which is exactly what they want us to believe. That way when our favorite characters start dropping like flies, we'll all be gutted just like at Baylor or the Red Wedding. I know it's not going to be the same show that it could have been if George was finished with his story, and I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that that's the version of the show we'd like to see, but this is a first for pop culture, this epic series being completely overtaken by its own adaptation. But I'd say we're in good hands. David and Dan were fans of the books long before starting the show, and they've been behind almost every script since the show has aired. They're doing the best they can in a less than desirable situation, and I think they're taking advantage of the fact that people are so wary. With the way Season 6 was done, it's setting up for quite a horrific and devastating Season 7. In a way, some fans seem to want them to fail, and most of what I've seen of complaints for this season are people trying to find every and any reason to dislike it. For example, again to point to the Battle of the Bastards, detractors note the lack of moral ambiguity that made Blackwater so interesting, where there was good and bad on either side, making rooting for one or the other difficult. But Ramsay has been a consistently and thoroughly evil character since Season 3, and one might prefer one battle over the other, but you can't really argue the lack of moral ambiguity. Ramsay is not Stannis, and never was. It just so happened that Ramsay didn't have anyone we liked fighting on his side the way Joffrey did. That even though we may have wanted Joffrey to lose, that also would have meant the death of Tyrion. The show has just followed the natural progression of events the same way it always has. So in the end, the two battles can't really be compared, nor should they. They're completely different moments, both justified by the events leading to them. There's nothing wrong with preferring Blackwater as a battle sequence obviously, but I think arguing that Bastards doesn't fit with the rest of the show is just plain wrong. The show has always had good and evil characters, and a plethora of characters that fall somewhere in the middle, like the Hound or Jaime. And sometimes the story will progress in such a way that we can root for the objective good guy against the objective bad guy. But clearly the show isn't done with the gray area present in episodes like Blackwater. Just look at the finale with Cersei's ascension. In a way, it's good to see the loyalty fans have for George, and it's nice to know how passionate people are and how desperately they don't want the show to jump the shark. I just think people have been more critical of the show now that David and Dan are the ones telling the story, and I think that distrust will allow them to drop some of the biggest surprises the show has ever seen. 
What are your thoughts on this season? What are your predictions for the seasons to come? Do you still believe in the showrunners or have you lost faith? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.